Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave, the Cyber Guy. I must uh, I go over uh, who I am again. Uh, I'm Dave Stevens. I teach IT and cybersecurity at the University of Hawaii Kapiolani Community College. And I'm here with the president of the Hawaii Advanced Technology Society. That's our cybersecurity club for all the UH campuses. And uh, Max here, Max Rieta. Thank you. Uh, welcome. You're the president of the KCC chapter, or CAPCC, Kapiolani Community College, right? Yes. Welcome. It's good to have you. You're only a second year, and you're our second president of, uh, of this chapter. Yeah? Yes, apparently. Yeah, we've we've only we just started this a couple of years ago, and I wanted to talk to you today about um, about your experience. You know, what got you into it? Where you think you're going? What you're getting out of it? Uh, we just got to emphasize that there are more ways to get into cybersecurity than going to YouTube and these other hacker sites and trying to figure out how to hack computers and doing it illegally and joining things like anonymous and doing hacktivism you can do it legally you can do it safely you can get your education in a formalized way you can do clubs and that's what we're here to talk to you about so yes. tell us a little about you uh, first of all how did you get to the islands or are you from here i am not from here i'm actually from california but i moved here in around third grade, so I technically am. That's from pretty from here. I yeah, mean, before so. third grade, we, yeah, yeah. there's not too much to count before that, right? This is true. <laughs> Where are you from this island, Oahu? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, good. And uh, the high school? High Folks school. who want to know what high school, right? Oh, Are you grad? Kaiser. Kaiser, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, my daughter, one of my daughters graduated Kaiser. Oh, okay. That's good. So Capulani's right down the street. Yes. Right, so that that's good. And uh, is that why you chose Capulani? Because it was just the best regional yeah. match for your location? It was right there. It was cheap, and it's it was there. So You had a lot of choices, though. We do cybersecurity at three of the four community colleges out here, right? We just, mm -hmm. uh, we just started at Windward, too. So four community colleges on Oahu plus two four-year universities, and you chose Kapiolani. And when you're done, will you be going on for a bachelor's degree? Yes, at West Oahu. West Oahu. Uh, will you be doing, the, then they have two routes, right? They have the IT, and then they have the information security and assurance. So which path? I believe it would be the IT. IT. Yeah. But you're doing cyber while you're at uh, CAPCC? Yes. Okay, let's talk about your journey. So you grew up here, basically, mm. and uh, and somewhere along the line, you decided information technology? Yeah, I was actually going to be a pilot, and then I realized I didn't want to do that. <laughs> oh, so. Okay, so I had this similar journey. So uh, mine was motion sickness. Okay. I decided I'm really sick in the air. This isn't going to work for me. <laughs> yeah. So what about you? Why did you decide? You changed. Um, I was thinking about it and I was talking to other uh, pilots and mm -hmm. they said they had to go through a long process of just flying cargo and other things and I didn't really want to be a like a bus driver in the plant and like in the air you got to pay your dues yeah you get a lot of flight hours yeah unless you go uh, in the military yeah right a lot but of even then you could fly a cargo plane yeah yeah <laughs> that's true but at least with the military the cargo planes can be massive yes so those things they carry tanks I can imagine that would be kind of fun. Yeah. But, you know, if that's not your gig. Uh, so, so many other things to choose from. Why IT? Why did that bubble up to the surface? It was, uh, I wanted to do piloting because of the mobility. I could travel, but IT, you could do that too. You sure. Could, Everybody needs it. Yeah, so right. you can work from your computer. As long as you have a computer, you could work. So I could travel and work. So that's why I felt IT was a good choice. Ah, the roaming thing. Okay, yeah. good. And more and more people are hiring for remote positions, uh, most especially in cybersecurity, right? So you can do remote vulnerability assessment and things like that. Is that what got you towards cyber? Because once you get into information technology, there's so many paths. Mm -hmm. There's database, there's web, there's programming for desktop and mobile. What, what took you to security? Security has everything within it. So I feel it would give me more options to choose from. I, if I didn't like networking, I could learn coding, but I could still be in security. So that's why I chose security. That's a good point. A lot of people don't understand when, when you get into cybersecurity, you are the pocket knife of the IT industry, right? You have to be jack of all trades. Yes. Master of none, 
but just good enough to know that element. And it, it helps in two different ways, right? It helps when you're doing the attacking and testing the boundaries of a, of a company, hopefully legally. Mm -hmm. And it also helps in defense, right? Because you know how to defend because you know there's an avenue, a vector of attack, so you can prevent it. Yes. Right? So that's great. You're in your first year. You just completed your first year. Yes. How'd it go? What were your feelings in the program so far? You've taken basic networking, probably basic programming. Yes. And uh, you did cybersecurity fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Right, and then your basic database class? Not yet. Not yet. You still got to take that. Yes. Uh, it's a it's a fun one. It, all the all the first year stuff is is pretty fun. What did you think about it so far? I loved it. I didn't realize there were certifications that you could get to become an ethical hacker. I never knew there is ethical hacking. It's a little place. bit of oxymoron to most people. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. match. You you kind of do the what are the the or Scooby? You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you just, Ethical? How does that work? Um, but you know, that's just a signed piece of paper. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference, right? You're still hacking, but someone says it's okay. Yeah. And, that's, and we're going to do some of that pretty soon here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got one coming up, so um, our audience should know. About once a year, sometimes hopefully more, we get companies to volunteer. Thank you for volunteering, companies. We really appreciate you volunteering. We know how hard this is for you to trust us. So we go and we test the boundaries of companies. We do vulnerability assessments, internal scans. Uh, we do uh, penetration testing. And we're going to try to do one this year coming up in October yes. for our next victim customer. Sorry. <laughs> the next uh, customer is going to say, thank you so much. And uh, we teach uh, all kinds of weird stuff. You're going to be in our next uh, year's classes now, uh, network security and the cyber attacks and defense, basically the ethical hacking. Yeah. Right? You're coming up. Uh, we teach everything, including lock picking, which is a, a great one, right? So uh, you wanted to do that as a club event, yes? Right. So let's talk about the club, right? You, you're you're learning as you go through. You learn. You get a cybersecurity certificate at the end of this, and that's the formalized training, mm -hmm. right? We also hook you up with internships, which we'll talk about in a second. But during that experience, we also give you the chance to do club activities, which is outside of class. Tell me a little bit about your experience, how you got into it, uh, and why you chose to lead the club, because you're the president now. Yes. Well, I got into the club because I realized people are a very good resource. And if I was having problems not understanding how to do security, it's looking it up is going to help me. But if I had like a resource of an actual person, it would that connection actually helps me learn a lot more, and I feel that for everyone else. So we actually did a, a pen test in last year in March over break, and it was an event that I learned so much in, and the club members also agree with me. We did, it was with UH Manoa's Grey Hats. So we, we did a mock pen test. We went through the entire, uh, process, even uh, doing the, the write-up at, at the end. Well, let's, let's go through the steps in that process. Yes. These are five or six steps. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and outline the process that you went through that's the formalized part of that pen test. OK, so first there is the, the scanning. Reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. Reconnaissance, yeah, yeah. So we would do the recon, figure out, or we would first do the scope and figure out what the what they're asking us to do. Now that's important, yes. right? Because if you do something that they didn't say was okay, you're out of scope. You went out of the bounds and you could be in trouble, right? Because they didn't actually sign the paper saying you could do that. Yeah. So the first thing you gotta determine with the customers, what can we do? Yes. Right. And also you can, uh, you would do more than, like more work than you're getting paid for. True. So yeah. I, I was like, oh, okay, like that's. Good point. Yeah, they really hammered that in. Like, you know the scope of the project. So after doing that, doing the recon, going into the machines, it's all uh, fun from there. But the the documentation after was what, what got me. But I feel like that's something that's very important that needs to be uh, um, taught. Because I think not many people realize that's your mission. Yeah. That paperwork that's so boring to come up with. I get it. You know, I, it's not the fun part really. But that's your mission. That's the product you're supposed to deliver. Mm -hmm. So uh, taking copious notes as you go through all these steps, massively yeah. important. Um, so you did, you did recon. Of course, you did uh, open source intelligence, 
right? Mm -hmm. You went out there and scanned websites or, or looked at social media. Uh, you looked at the, the company's websites probably, right? And then once you determined uh, all those elements that you can, you can use in things like phishing emails and things like that, then you can do some scanning. Oh, Were you allowed yes. to do uh, internal scans or external scans on this network? Um, I believe we did both. I'm, it was my first time actually doing a pen test, so it was a little hazy. But I remember uh, having like internal um, knowledge of the, the computers. So. so did the customers give you a little bit of information about the, the network itself before you started out? Yes. Okay, so that's what, that's what we'd call uh, either a gray box or a white box. Okay, yeah. Right, so a white box, let's, let's go through the different boxes, right? We have white box, the customer tells you everything, mm -hmm. and you just go test. Then there's a gray box where they tell you a little bit, and they want to know if you can find out more, right? That sounds like what you went through. Yes. And then, of course, the hardest, which was the first pen test we ever did with the club, is a black box. And it took us months, and we really didn't get very far, but we did actually trip some people up. But we had to do a tremendous amount of research. So if you sign up for a black box test, it is the toughest no, time you're getting ever, into. right? You just, that is, that's one, you, you want to charge some serious coin for a black box. And you, you ask for six or nine months to, to recon. And, and people really have to be liberal um, with that. And customers... When you're talking about the scope, uh, we've done pen tests where they say, no, just email us, and that's it. Just do the phishing emails. Mm -hmm. And then other customers have said, you can, it's weapons free. And we actually broke in to some of the places and, uh, and used lock picking and other, other methods to get in. So after the, the scanning, did, wait, did you use uh, just like Nmap, or did you use Nessus or one of the other tools for scanning? Or? Yeah, we used Nmap, a NMAP. lot of Nmap. So a lot, that's a lot of hand coding, mm -hmm. a lot of bash scripting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good. That's, uh, that's yeah. great experience. And so, well, oh yeah, you did this with UH Manoa. Yes. So UH Manoa, our, our viewers should know, out of the 10 uh, campuses in the uh, University of Hawaii system, UH Manoa is the mothership, first campus. Mm -hmm. And then some of the other community colleges sprouted up. And then we got a couple other four years, including UH West, also on this island, but on the other end of the island, right? Um, so you did that for the, the original campus, which has a club called the Gray Hats. Yes. Right? Okay, that's great. I'm glad you guys are working together. Tell me a little bit more about this experience. Well, I want to do that more with our club this year. Yeah. Because it was so beneficial for everyone. I was, I didn't know much going into it, but after coming out, it was a three day kind of boot camp experience. Mm. So I really enjoyed that. It's good that you know this, too, because now when new members come in, they're going to be, you know, first years, they're freshmen, you can mentor them. Yes. And I find that when I mentor somebody, when I teach something, I actually learn more. Yes. I absorb more of the, of the material by teaching other people. So this is a great experience. You're not only getting the formalized education, you're going through the homeworks and the labs and all the other things we do, but now you're mentoring others, which helps you absorb that knowledge, get better at it, gets more practice. And uh, one of the things that I, I love to tell people was, the club is one of those activities you can add to your resume when you're out there trying to get a real job because they ask you three questions. You know, what's your education? Uh, what are your certifications? What have you done? What's your experience, right? Mm -hmm. And most of the time you get out of uh, like a two-year degree, you really haven't done much. You get that little internship we give you. But with the club, you're actually doing the things that you want to do in real life. You can actually say, hey, I've done four pen tests already. Yeah. And say, you know, I had an internship and I did this and we did vulnerability assessments. Uh, so it, it adds to that entire experience, you know. And if you go on to UH West, you're going to find um, Dr. Matt Chapman, who is in charge of that program out there. He's a tremendous asset to your career. He's going to boost you and put you into more, uh, more activities that give you the real life hands on experience so you can translate that into a real career. You looking forward to that? Yes, I am, highly. Yeah. Okay. What, we got about one minute to break. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your club experience, and then we're going to take a little break. So last year in the club, we also did a, a networking event, and that was very fun. Other than meeting uh, people within the industry that could give us advice and tips on how to do things or like what route to take, what certifications to get, I think it was very helpful. And 
the under, uh, we also did NCL and National Cyber League. Yes. So those are the virtualized labs that you can do individually or as teams, mm -hmm. right? And that happens a couple of times a year. Yes. And it's nationwide. How'd you do? I did all right for my first time. <laughs> I was getting uh, pulled along by my other team members, but it was very fun, and I'm going to plan to do it again this year. It's it's quite inexpensive, right? It was 25 bucks, I think, this last time. Oh yeah. It's uh, it's quite reasonable to get into this competition, and most people don't because they have this fear of failure. And I, I encourage everyone to just go in and fail. Yeah. yeah. Just so you can see the environment. I'm glad you enjoy it. I'd like you to keep it up. Uh, we'll try to coach you more as you get through our, our classes. As much as we can, we have a, such a small staff, but it's great that you guys are teaming up. What's your membership right now? What's your roster at? What are your numbers at? I believe we have 14 members. 14 members? Yes. So we're going to have a great pen test. Yes. Okay, we're going to take a little break, come right back out of the commercial. Let's pay some bills. Until then, stay safe. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. You know, George Santayana said, you know, if you don't study history, you're, gonna, you're doomed to repeat it. And we have a history professor. It was wonderful to have him, uh, John David and HPU. And we do this thing, a uh, history lens. We see the world through history. Very important, critical to understand our world around us. We do this on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. whenever we can get him. Right. John, what would you add to right, that? Jay, well, just tune in, folks, because we're talking about incredibly important issues, and we're projecting backwards into history, looking through the lens of history to add to our knowledge about these very important current issues like uh, white supremacy, trade and tariffs, uh, uh, impeachment, all of these uh, important issues that we've been addressing on this show. Yeah, it, all, it runs all the way from, from terrifying tariffs <laughs> to historical right. history. John David. That's it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, John. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy. We're talking with Max Rieta, president of the Kapiolani Community College chapter of the uh, Hawaii Advanced Technology Society. I can't say that fast. That's not, it's not going to happen. So it's hats, caps, CC. Welcome back, Max. Thank uh, you. We were just talking about where you're from in California. You're from here, but you know, way, way back, your family was from Pasadena, mm -hmm. right? So I was, I was from just north of there. We were talking about the horrible traffic in L.A., which uh, we can almost get a taste of here in Honolulu a yes. couple times a day, right? Uh, Going to get that experience at West Oahu soon. Oh, that's right. So uh, our audience who's not from the island should know. Um, UH Manoa is in the Honolulu area, and then that, that's the east part of the island, and the west side of the island uh, has just be, become uh, heavily developed over the last 20 years. They call it the second city, or Kapolei. And just shy of Kapolei is UH West Oahu, another four-year campus. But there is only one road that goes between here and there. It is a massive freeway. How many lanes across is it? I'm not sure. It's got to be 10 or 12 lanes, yeah. right, all the way with both ways. And it locks up tight, like a parking lot. Yeah. And, and you... Uh, it's a horrible commute, man. I don't envy you. Do you do you get to drive, or you have to take the bus? I will be getting a car. I actually had a motorcycle that broke down, oh. and I, but I realized with these new responsibilities of being a club president, I need to be able to get places consistently. Good for you. Yes. Wait, how old are you? Twenty-two. And you're responsible. I know. Wow, right? <laughs> that is just amazing. Oh, you're you're kicking the millennials to the curb, man. That's great. All oh, my daughters are millennials. So. Oh. Listen up, girls. Uh, my daughters, uh, listen up. This is a responsible person. <laughs> See, this person is doing things the right way. So you are in your second year. Let's let's talk about your journey now. What you expect and and what you really want to accomplish. So your next year, you're going to be president of the club. We're going to try to do a pen test. Mm -hmm. We want to do more club activities. So we just did a club activity just before the summer started mm -hmm. with the, UA, uh, the U.S. Army military intelligence 
right? Yeah, the PowerShell Empire. PowerShell Empire, right? That's a tool in uh, Kali Linux. Mm -hmm. and, uh, or did it come with it? Or did we have to download it? I, I can't remember. Uh, I think we downloaded it. We installed it. Yeah, we installed, yeah, we installed it. But, uh, so uh, let's, let's describe what you had to get ready for. So have you installed your virtual machine of the Kali Linux distro yet? Yes, I have. Good. That was right. one of the first things we had to do last, uh, last year for the club, and I believe it would be a good thing to do this year as well. Describe the Kali Linux distro and why we use it. Uh, it's, it's customized for pen testing. It has all the, the applications we use. And so you don't have to download them onto your other computers. Was 400 something tools are already in there. Yeah. And we still download more. Yeah. And we still download, there's more stuff out there. Yeah, uh, and, and Kali Linux is a, a Linux distro or distribution of flavor of Linux mm -hmm. based on Debian for our viewers out there. We're gonna inform them it's not Windows. Uh, what, what you'll see coming up in, in your new courses here, the labs that we do are mainly use your Kali Linux virtual machine, mm -hmm. which can be on a Mac or a Windows machine, right? And, and then we use something like the Metasploitable download ISO, which is just the, the wide open, stuff full of vulnerabilities, uh, Linux distro, probably Ubuntu or something like that. And I, I, can, I will teach you guys how to hack that and find out how to realize that it's been hacked. Go look for the clues, which is a, the two levels you wanna know. You wanna know how to actually break in, but you don't want to know if you're defending that system, how do you know it's been broken in too? Yes. Right, so that, that's a massively important thing. But uh, we, we do that on your machine. So you can repeat these labs. And the great thing is once you get those th two things installed and they're communicating, you can isolate them from the rest of your network so you don't kill anybody else, right? And you can repeat uh, experiments that you've seen done on the web. You can just go out there and look at Volnhub, have you seen volnhub.com? I have not yet. Oh, okay, we're gonna go to volnhub. A lot of fun. Okay. So people say, hey, look what I broke, and they step, step by step instructions. Oh, okay. This is how you do it. And um, for the majority of the time it works, but as you know, people put up instructions and then the system gets changed, so sometimes it doesn't work, you gotta figure it out. Yes. Right, that, that's the thing that I, I think most people in IT don't understand, that if you have a set of instructions, it's good for the 35 seconds until the next edition comes out and then they'll leave the instructions up and they just don't work. Yeah. So it's up to you to figure them out. That's why IT people are so valuable. Yes. Because there's no instructions. You Problem solving. Out. Problem solving, right? Um, pro don't be the problem solver that I am. Okay. So I am a superstar problem solver. I am not a superstar star, uh, problem avoider, oh. which is probably why I'm so good at problem solving is because I make those bad decisions or I have in my life, mm -hmm. uh, it's better if you learn from me. <laughs> don't, don't make all those mistakes, just do it right the first time. Learn from your elders, I did not. Uh, it looks like you're going down the right path. This next two years, you get to learn and I'll, I'll share some stories with you about what to watch out for and how to keep yourself on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta choose where to go with this. Now, do you know within the cybersecurity realm, what do you might wanna do? I would rather be on the defensive side. Defense, so blue team. Yes. Right, okay. What part of defense? Now you don't wanna be the guy that scans logs all day long or you wanna be the firewall configuration guy or you're gonna be defending the Office 365 cloud version or? I'm not sure, I, I want to own my own company. So if anything, oh, I would be managing people doing that. That's great, yes. all right. Entrepreneurial spirit, that's, that's, I encourage that, especially in the security field. It seems that if you, if you go to work for a company, you do make a good paycheck. Mm -hmm. You will, and, and there's always a need for you, so you'll never be out of work. The problem is you're really not in control of your career, right? Yeah. But if you open your own company, especially in cybersecurity where the unemployment rate is 0%, mm -hmm. right? There's always work for you. So as long as you're good with finance and you get the right CPA to handle your accounting and you know how to do a business license, you can be okay. And it, it's a good life. Just get used to saving money. Yeah. Because you make money and then you make no money for yeah. a little while. It's kind of like acting. You know, you work in Hollywood, you work for six months, and then you don't work for six months. But if you save your money, you're just fine. Uh, this is true. Yeah, most of my friends when we were growing up uh, living outside of Hollywood, you know, a lot of actors, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of my buddies would, would, uh, would work for six months doing gaffing or, you know, sound on a movie set. 
And then they take six months off because they saved up enough money. They went surfing in Bali or, you know, yeah, my, toured Europe. My dad was a, a stuntman for, in California. Really? Yeah. So. You've got that look to you. Oh. You do. <laughs> you got that swagger. So bring that to the game. It, it means a lot. You know, the self-confidence goes with security. So you're going to do well. Oh, thank you. So your journey now is the next uh, two semesters with us at least. Mm -hmm. What then? What then? I would be getting an internship and pursuing my degree at West Oahu. So our internship, we do one at West Oahu, and you'll do another one, I believe, at West Oahu, right? We do one at, I'm sorry, CAPCC and then West Oahu. Mm -hmm. So CAPCC is the one you, you haven't done yet. No, I'm preparing for Okay. It. Yeah. Did you sign up for the class? Because it's a class. Yeah, I signed up for it. Okay. I, I talked to the teacher already, and I was asking if he could help me get one. And he's like, no, I, I have a, a lot of kids to help. So I was like, okay, well, I'll try to get mine right now then and figure that out during the fall. After the show, I've got someone for you to call. Oh, uh, you. So you can have a job right now. Oh, that's <laughs> not, relieving. Not a problem at all. Uh, like I said, it's 0% unemployment, so I have employers calling me all the time. Hey, we need somebody right this second. So mm -hmm. I will hook you up. Uh, don't embarrass me. I won't. Okay. Uh, the, the internship teacher, you'll be happy to know, Dale Nakasone. Yeah. He's going to be our guest in a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. So next week, uh, you're the president of HATS Cap CC at Cap Yelani. Rochelle Monslungan was mm -hmm. the previous president and is now president of UH West. Yes. Right? And she's graduating. But she's going to host the show next week while I'm at Black Hat. Oh, okay. Which we missed you. You yes. need to go out to Black Hat and DEF CON. Yes. It's something you should, should make that pilgrimage once a year. Yes, I would and, like to. And see that. It's, it's a little pricey, but you get student rates. And uh, hopefully this marathon thing we're doing, we're going to get you some, some money for next year. Let's, yeah. Let's hope that, that happens. Okay, so with our last minute, uh, tell us about your expectations and your journey after you graduate UH West. So after I graduate, I would like to work a little bit, say, gain experience, professional experience, yeah. and then uh, work and start to develop my own company in more of security for homes, because I know uh, homes are becoming smarter. With the Internet of Things and all Smart that. homes were built without security in mind. Yes. Yeah. So if I fit that niche, then that would be good. That's a good plan. I like that. The uh, Underwriters Laboratory, UL, who comes out with some of the standards for electronic devices, mm -hmm. is coming out with a whole security standard. Because things like uh, webcams, nanny cams, automatic door locks, garage door openers, built with so little security that they're going to put the security standard in there. Okay. So maybe that could be your specialty. Yes. I hope, I hope, because that's a perfect niche that is yet unfilled, especially in Hawaii, you could be the pioneer, be right out there in the vanguard of the assault. All right. Thank you very much, Max. Thank you for having me. All right. I know I want you to host another show coming up in uh, a couple of months, right? You said you were comfortable with the October slot. Oh, yes. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, be prepared for Max to come back around October and do a show all by himself, and he's going to get some experience uh, hosting the Cyber Underground, which is another one of our tools to get uh, students up to speed. Okay, thanks for coming by, everybody, and thanks for listening to us. And uh, next week, I will be in Black Hat DEF CON at, in Las Vegas. Rachel Monsalungan, our former HATS uh, Cap CC and current uh, UH West Oahu, uh, president of the HATS Society, will be hosting a show with uh, Todd Nakapoi, our state CIO. And that's going to be an interesting show, and then I'll be back the following week on the 17th. Until then, everybody. Stay safe.